Yeah, hi guys. My name is uh, Oleksiy, or Alec, just whatever. And uh, I'm from Ukraine, but I now live in Rotterdam, and I work for a company called Where Reasonable People, uh, where we're doing different kinds of prototypes. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the Secure Coding Guide, uh, which is a document from Apple. So, and um, basically, Secure Coding Guide looks something like this. And this is just a normal document from Apple, as we all know, like, uh, manual memory management programming guide or um, like concurrency programming guide. And basically what it, uh, the purpose of this document is uh, to basically get acquainted with the, what kind of vulnerabilities we as an iOS developers can face and how to avoid those vulnerabilities. So, and uh, the whole document starts with some introduction and with some definitions. And basically one of the definitions is what is the difference between the hacker and attacker? So, and uh, despite the mass media uh, trying to uh, like, uh, tell us that the hackers are those guys who are responsible for Trump becoming a president or uh, for uh, like, uh, uh, your emails being hacked, but uh, in real world, it's not uh, really like that. And uh, hackers, I have a quote, are those who enjoy learning about the intricacies of code or an operating system. So what it means in general is that hackers usually play around with software or with operating systems and then they find some vulnerabilities and usually they flag it to the companies that own this uh, software. And if company does nothing with it, then usually they publish it to the internet. And if they include some code of how to take advantage of this vulnerability, that's called exploit. So on the other hand, we have uh, 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 crackers, attackers, or they're also called as uh, black hats. So these are actually the guys who are trying to steal your data, trying to steal your credit card numbers, and uh, trying to make the Trump the president. But and uh, in general, they don't really know about software engineering that much, and usually they just use the public exploits that they can find on the, on the internet, and they just use them to hack the data. So um, let's take a look at what kind of vulnerabilities uh, are there in this document. And one of them are buffer overflows and underflows, also invalidated input, social engineering, and some other things. So, and I'll start with buffer over overflows and underflows. And uh, I prepared this small code snippet, uh, for, it's a C code, but uh, don't be scared, we're gonna go line for line and to understand what is going on. So we have this uh, function called do it, which is a void function, and it takes a void as an argument. Basically, in the first line of this function, we create a static array uh, with a size of 128 characters. And then we use gets function to basically prompt the user uh, from the console and whatever uh, he types into console will be fit into the buffer that we created before. And then what we do, we just print it to the console, uh, the, con the string that is contained in the buffer. So in our main function, uh, we just print some stuff first, then we call our do it function, and then we print some other stuff. So one thing uh, to notice here is that the gets function is a kind of unsafe function. And what, it mean, what I mean by unsafe is that it doesn't really check the bounds of how, how long is the input from the user and how, how much space do you have in your buffer. So let's take a look at how, why it actually is bad. So on the right hand, we have uh, like a really schematic uh, visualization of how the stack looks like. And basically our doing function lives somewhere on the stack. And basically in the stack, we have somewhere at the start of the buffer, which is uh, indicated by buff zero. Then we have an end of our buffer, which is buff 127. And there is some other stuff uh, on the stack. And then somewhere we have a return address of the function. So the return address of the function is actually when, when our dude function printed the, uh, our uh, buffer, then the return address tells uh, where to jump back after executing the function. So in case, in our case, we're jumping back to main function. So, and now imagine that uh, in your get function, the user provided the string that is much longer than the buffer. So instead of 128 characters, your string contains of like thousands of characters. So what will happen? That this string will first fill all the buffer from zero to 127, but after that, it will start overriding whatever is on the stack. So, and potentially, it will also override the return address of that function. 
So in what it means in turn that uh, eventually our do it function will no longer return to the point in main function that it was supposed to return. So and if the hacker is smart, then he can basically um, feed the return address to whatever point in memory he wants. And for example, imagine that he can feed the return address as the buffer itself. And then it will basically, our function will jump to the buffer. And in the buffer, he could, for example, feed some code to execute, and then the code that was in the buffer will be executed. So what it means in turn that this small vulnerability leads to arbitrary code execution. That means that if our um, program has a root access, then basically we can uh, do uh, file operations, we can send um, spam emails, we can do whatever. So this small and tiny line of code can do a lot of trouble. So uh, a part of, um, there are also other types of overflows like uh, overflow on the stack, there is also a heap overflow, um, but it's a bit more complicated because we don't have a return address there, but it's still uh, vulnerable. Then we have an integer overflow. For example, in, um, you know, uh, we know that if we increment an integer of more than its maximum value, it will become a negative value. So although this fact alone does, is not that uh, unsafe, but for example, in the early version of Node.js, if you feed a negative number to the size of memory you want to allocate, this led to a heap overflow. So although it's not directly unsafe, but it can lead to other types of overflows. So in general, like pointer arithmetic that we do when we write C code is pretty unsafe. And um, it's not only unsafe because you can uh, create a lot of bugs, but it's also unsafe because it creates a lot of vulnerabilities and uh, possibilities for attack. So how can we avoid this type of overflow? So, and the first and pretty much the obvious way to uh, deal with this, in our case, we can, instead of using the get function, we can use its alternative, which checks the bounds. And this, in this case, it's called fgets. But, uh, and for every function that is potentially unsafe, there is an its safe version uh, in C language. And, um, but, um, yeah. Uh, and uh, I guess the, also some things are done by OS itself. So for example, in case in iOS and OS X, when uh, the point, so your function on stack is randomly uh, placed every time you run your app. So basically it's a bit, it makes it a bit harder for attacker to like smartly put the return address, but it's still possible. So, and I guess the last and the most like easiest is just don't use C because we have, uh, Higher, more higher level and safer languages like Swift or, or Rust. And for example, the motivation behind Rust was to make a safe version of C. And uh, also in Swift, for example, if you try to overflow an integer, it will crash your app. Uh, and uh, although you can still, for example, in Swift and Rust, you can still do raw pointer arithmetic, but you have to mark it as unsafe. So for example, that's why in Swift we have these methods like unsafe, raw, mutable pointer, and all the things that start with unsafe. That's because, so we're, it's, the Swift is safe by default. So if we, if we want to, if we need raw uh, memory, then we can do it, but we have to mark it as unsafe. And the same goes with Rust. So this was for the overflow. Um, and now another type of vulnerabilities is called invalidated input. And there are different types of it, like format string vulnerabilities, URL commands, code insertion, and social engineering. And I'm going to talk a bit more about format string vulnerabilities. And actually, I prepared some live coding for you guys. OK. Uh, so I prepared this app. This is just a tiny app where you can uh, sign in and basically you insert your username and, my, uh, and, I, and password and the only user that I have is a test user and the password is obviously QWERTY. And then if you sign in, you basically see this uh, picture. And then uh, if you try to sign in with something other than test, then you get an error message. So let's take a look at the code itself. So what I have in my app is just a core data. The core data has one entity called user, and the user has an email field and password field. So what we're doing when, so when you log in, um, I'm basically, uh, we're using the uh, NS fetch request and filtering uh, it so that it only returns the, those uh, uh, users that uh, 
have email and password uh, as we um, basically typed it in the input field. If there is more than zero um, fields, then we can uh, we go to the next controller. Otherwise, we print an error. So as you can see here, we're using uh, like for our predicate. And the thing with like is that you can use wildcards with like statement. So for example, in, in this case, the wildcard is an asterisk uh, symbol. And actually, nobody forbids us from using the wildcard um, uh, right in our app. So for example, if we try here to put instead of username, we try to put asterisk for username and asterisk for password, it's going to work. Because the query, because like with asterisk, will return all the elements, all the objects in your core data although I have only one there. So um, I guess the easy fix would be just not to use like in this case. And for example, to use an equal sign. And this actually works. So if we try to use it. Okay, so if we try to use asterisks now, then we can see that it doesn't work. However, we're not 100% safe yet. So, um, and the thing is that we're still using predicate and we still basically insert a string in our predicate or in SQL statement. So what we can do is called an SQL injection and basically we can insert in our text field some part of SQL code to uh, basically overcome the, uh, our checking the password. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm, instead of my username, I'm gonna print this small thing. It's basically part of our predicate. So what I did here, I just inserted code like or one equals one. And one is always equals one. That's why the whole predicate evaluates to true. And basically our predicate will return all the elements in the core data again. So if we do signing, we're logged in again. Yeah, and this is really horrible, as you may th uh, see. But this, is, uh, this thing actually happens because we have a bug in our code. So if we take a, a closer look at uh, what we're doing with predicate. So when we create a predicate, uh, it requires a format. And what we're doing here, we're first using the Swift formatting to insert the username and password. So what we're doing, we actually uh, return in a format an already formatted string. Basically, we're formatting twice. First, we're formatting with Swift uh, string formatting, and then and as predicate formats your input. So this is actually quite easy to avoid if we just use this code snippet that I have. Okay. So what it does, uh, it's, uh, now we're just using the, we're providing the format in the format string for an as predicate, and we pass all the variables outside as arg list. So in this way, when we provide is at arg list, then uh, basically every uh, string that you provide will be escaped and our SQL injection will no longer work. So if we try to do that once again, and do the same stuff we did before, it no longer works. So this is something that was written in the secure coding guide. If your function expects a format string, you have to make sure that you don't provide an already formatted string. And uh, this is not only in, uh, used in NS predicate, but this is, can also be used in NS alert or just any function that expects a format. So be careful with that. Okay, uh, so that was for uh, invalidated uh, input. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, called social engineering text. And this is kind of my favorite because this is what it actually means is kind of tricking people into uh, doing bad, bad dis making bad decisions. And uh, I guess uh, the, the good example is fishing. And uh, I, like the history, like the fishing was really popular when the, in the early days of social networks in Ukraine and Russia, we have a different kind of Facebook, which is called VK. And uh, like in late 2000s, what they did, they basically created the website that looks the same as the VK of Facebook with a login page. And then uh, users will log in with their uh, username and password that they use for original uh, Facebook. And then basically they will steal all their credentials and then redirect to the original page. 
And uh, this way, they stole like millions of accounts in that, uh, on that social network. So, and for example, but it's not only for web applications. And for example, if we're doing an iOS app, let's uh, imagine that we, our app accepts some URL. And uh, in this URL, a, as a parameter, you pass the a path to the file uh, that you want to delete. So for example, we have, uh, this is our URL, my app, same, the command, then delete in the file. And then the attacker could provide something like cache data that is slowing down your system, and then comma the actual name of the file, which is key from my Bitcoin wallet. And then imagine that you use this um, uh, parameter, which is file, to prompt the user to ask him whether he's ready, whether, is he sure he wants to delete. And this could be, look something like this. Are you sure you want to delete the cache data that is slowing down your system and blah, blah, blah. And as you can see that basically, of course, when the user sees like, do you want to delete this super bad file that really makes all the things worse and will improve performance of your um, laptop? And of course, you say yes. And this kind of, and this is a really tricky point because there's no actual way of we as a software engineers can detect this kind of things from while developing. So, and actually, like Apple suggests doing two things is uh, designing more secure uh, user interfaces that would avoid this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I don't know, for example, maybe putting quotes around the uh, file name here <laughs> will make the uh, thing. But in general, the other approach is to just to educate user. And in general, there's no like uh, just basically instructions of what to do and how to avoid uh, engi social engineering attacks. Um, there are lots of also other types of vulnerabilities that were in the document, and I'm going to briefly uh, go through them. And one of them is in secure file operations. And that means that whenever you do any file operations, you need to make sure that you check the status of that operation and you check the result. And uh, you'd also need to make sure that uh, when you use a temporary file, for example, that you don't, uh, that this is not a sim link to somewhere or a hard link. Um, and this is also closely related to the other type of vulnerability, which is a race condition. That means that if your uh, program requires some order of execution, then a hacker can basically take advantage of the small time gaps uh, in your program to insert some malicious code or change the file name or something like that. And uh, I guess the biggest example is when you use a temporary file where you write in. And first, at some point, you check whether the file exists or not. And then there's a time lag, and then you actually write the data to that file. And basically, in this time lag, the attacker could um, change, substitute your file with something else where, uh, where there could be a malicious code or, a, or a write it to a completely different um, location with a sim link or hard link. So you have to be careful um, with um, and check more often uh, whether the file exists or not before writing and making operations there. Uh, and I guess just uh, yeah, be careful with well all file uh, system operations. So there are still a lot of other things that are, uh, I haven't uh, covered yet in this document, and I'm really um, you have to read it if you're an iOS developer. I think it's a really interesting document, although it can be interesting not only for iOS developers but also for web developers, and they include a lot of different stuff. But and uh, the last thing that I wanted to say is uh, keep on hacking. <laughs> Thanks, guys.